everyone it's Nicole and I'm here with my mini album of all the books that I read in 2019 now these are the books that I read in November so the first thing I always do is I have these little coffee cups that's where I've been keeping um, all the books the number of books that I'm reading I put them in the album in the order that I read them so this time around we're going from 82 to 90 and so in the month of November, I read nine books. And the way that I stamped them out is I knew that I was going from 80 to 89. So I, instead of taking out the eight, you know, nine times, what I do is I stamp all the eights and then I'll do the other numbers after. So I make sure to do 88 because, you know, I need two eights for that one. And then that way I don't take out the stamps 10, 15 times. Now I have to say those little stamps, I absolutely love them. I've had them for quite a few years, but they're no longer sticking onto the um, plastic. So I'm afraid to lose them. I'm gonna need to wash them or something and make them sticky again. Then I showed you the collection, the Project Life collection that I use this month. So what I do is every month I pick one collection. And then I choose my cards from that one collection. I don't go between collections. I really make it so that this goes as fast as I can. I love this project, but I don't want to spend, you know, five hours doing this mini album per month. Normally what I end up spending is about an hour every month. And I kind of document all the books that I read in that month. Now I have to say for 2020, I want to keep doing that. I want to keep um, the album going, but I think I'm going to do it differently because I've been doing a six by eight album, which I really like, but I think I'm going to do it in a 12 by 12 album from now on. And then that way I'm still using, using Project Life cards. So I'm going to use Project Life pockets, but I'll be able to put more in, onto one page and then I'll be able to maybe put more than one year per book and I might eventually move all these cards in the 12 by 12 album. I might just do that just so that I have more than one year in one little album. This was fun and I really enjoyed doing these little mini albums but I think that a 12 by 12 album I'm going to have a spot that I'm going to have downstairs here and so I'll be able to just take the albums out and look at all the pages that I've done, that I've done, whether they're, you know, about my books or just regular scrapbooking. Now, I first I thought I only read eight books. And then when I looked on Goodreads, I was like, wait a second. I also read this book on in November. So I need to print out the photo. So I had to print out the photo for Starfish and then... Um, which was the first book I read in November. I don't know how I missed that one, but, and then, so I had one little cup missing. Another thing I did right away is I have a five-star rating stamp and I stamped all the cards all at the beginning. And then that way I can just kind of put that away and not worry about the ink and stick in my hand into the ink. Now I have to say the decorating on these little cards is very minimal. Um, I kind of pulled a stash that I use just for this and a lot of them are little stickers that you would use in planners like those books. I got those at Michael's. Uh, they're My Mind's Eye and this one is Chamel and I just find stuff in those books. I don't go beyond that. I put a few little stickers and I call it good. I color in the the star rating and I write about the books. So let's talk about Starfish. Starfish I gave four stars to and this is about a girl and her dream to get into art school. She finds that she's not um, like her mother doesn't pay her much attention and her art is everything and the school that she wanted to get into Prism I think it was called they don't accept her and that kind of sets her in a whirlwind and then her abusive 
uncle ends up moving in with them and that kind of is the last straw. So she ends up moving across the country and befriends like an artist and he teaches her even more about painting and, and that kind of thing. I really enjoyed that book. It was really good. I gave it four star. Now, the very next book I read that month is called Dear Evan Hansen. And this is based on a Broadway show. And I think the book was written after it became a Broadway show. And it's about this boy and growing up and there's someone in his life that ends up, that an acquaintance that ends up committing suicide. And he ends up, kind of making up some stuff. I, I have to say at the beginning, I did not enjoy this book. I couldn't understand why he was lying. <laughs> I couldn't get behind it. I did enjoy the book more at the end. So I did give it 3.75 stars. And it was, it was good. Like I said, it's just at the beginning, I just couldn't get behind the reason why he was, he was lying. And, um, but I did enjoy, I think if I have a chance to go see the Broadway show, I definitely, definitely will. And that's a Broadway show that my son wants to see too. So, uh, it's definitely, you know, something that we want to see. Now, the next book I read was Dare Mighty Things by Heather Kavinsky. And this is a young adult sci-fi and it's about, um, it's sort of a competition to decide who is going to be the youngest person to go out into space, like to become an astronaut. I love this book. I think I love any kind of school setting and um, preparing to, you know, to go to battle or on an adventure or a quest. I love those books ever since I list or I read Illuminae last year I think those are my kind of books so I gave that five stars that that was so good then the next book I read was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and this is an adult uh, fantasy and it's how there is different Londons there's a red London a white London a gray and black London and each London has different uh, levels of magic and some of the, you know, one of them has no magic. And there's this one magician, Kel. He's the only one that can go in between these Londons. And one of, one of these times that he comes across, he brings something that he shouldn't have. And it starts this whole quest. And loved this book. Absolutely loved it. I gave it five stars. I'm not surprised because any books by Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab, I absolutely love. And I can't wait to finish the trilogy. Now, the next book I read was The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon. And this is a young adult contemporary about Natasha and Daniel. And Natasha, um, they found out that they're being deported. And that's the day after she is to like she's to be deported in within 24 hours. Well, she meets Daniel and this is like their 24 hour kind of romance story. I really enjoyed this story and I really liked how it ended. It was, it was real. It's, it, it, you know, it didn't make it sound like, um, they could conquer everything. It was just real. And I really, really loved, uh, this book and I gave it four stars. The next book I read, was Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. And this is a young adult fantasy about a girl, Amani, and she is this amazing gunslinger or gun shooter. And it's in the desert and she teams up with a prince and they need to, to save sort of their land from this notorious, nasty king. I love this book. I am reading now the second book but the first one, I gave it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. It was really a good um, good book, really full of action, interesting, enjoyed it. The next book I read was The Babysitter's Coven. And this is by Kate Williams. And this is a young adult contemporary with some magic. It's about this group of 
girls that they're all in this babysitter's club and then a couple of them realize that they can do stuff you know so they kind of realize that they have magic and it kind of it, it was I enjoyed it I gave it three and a half star it wasn't one of my favorite books of all time but there's a second book coming out this year I think in 2020 and I'll definitely be picking it up three and a half stars really good I enjoyed it and the next two books are um, some graphic novels which I am not a big graphic novel person actually those were the, the two first graphic novels that I've ever read and these are part of the Lunar Chronicles series and this follows Ico and I can tell you both books I gave four and a half stars and this takes place after the last book like from the Lunar Chronicles so winter and then whatever novellas this is after that and Aiko goes on this adventure to capture some of the creatures that Luna created and left on Earth. And it's sort of her job to go and apprehend them and bring them back to, to Luna. And of course, we get to see all of our, you know, favorite characters. So you see Cinder again and you see... Scarlet, Cress, Winter, and all the characters that we just fell in love during the Lunar Chronicles, they're all in this. The only thing, I gave both of them four and a half stars, and the reason that I knocked off a half a star is I so wish that this would have been even one full-length novel, you know, combine the two graphic novels and make a full story out of it. And then that way we would have been immersed in the story a little bit more, but I absolutely loved it. I love those two books. They had been on my TBR to read for a long time. I am very much so that I, when I start a series, I love to read everything that goes with that series. So whether there's novellas, graphic novels, I just love to read everything in that world. If I'm invested in that world and definitely I was invested in the Lunar Chronicles world and this just kind of it almost gave me a taste for some more I, I hope that someday you know maybe she can do some full-length novels but that's it that's going to complete all the books that I read in November and I want to thank you so much for watching bye